Come you, blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, and peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord for God, God Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, the Lamb of God, the Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold. But what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Rejoice, Rejoice O, o hearts, hearts that, that seek, seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name. Make known among the nations his deeds. Sing to him, sing his praise. Proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he the Lord is our God. Throughout the earth his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. 
He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, called Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophet spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us, while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they went out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way, and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Preparation from this, I was reading something and it said, looking at these words here in the beginning of this gospel early on, it says, we had hoped. We had hoped that he would be the one to redeem Israel. It says that he was a prophet, mighty indeed in word. And they speak about Jesus in the past tense, how he had done these things. He was this person. But even still, we see they're downcast because they believe that these things have come to an end. And so their hopes are now fading, and they're trying to figure out what to do now. And we see that our Lord comes to them, and even as they're looking at him only in the past tense, that he is there in the present, that he is walking alongside them. He is conversing with them. And so for us who have been reflecting this last week, and Holy Week was a time where we kind of focused on those lowest things, the profound suffering of our Lord, our own weakness and vulnerability, those low places in the human heart. So today, this is a time where our hearts ought to be raised up, to look to those highest things, the promises that have been fulfilled, our hope as Christians of eternal life, eternal life promise with the Lord in heaven, union with him, the fact that he has been raised from the dead and is no longer or is not something in the past tense, this isn't something that just happened, but is something that is present now. That our Lord is very much in our midst. That we do have him with us. And these things which we recall are not something that remains in the past, but something we can speak of now. And just as for the disciples, that knowledge of him being in the present and recognizing him, seeing him, there in the breaking of the bread was that which which spurned their hope on again, rekindled their faith. So too for us, we find ourselves feeling downcast or lost or low in hope in any way. That time to encourage ourselves that our Lord is not in the past, but he is in the present. And we look to him for our hopes for the future too. And we see this even with Peter and John in this first reading from Acts of the Apostles. 
that this miracle that they're able to work is because of the power of Christ. That this power which the Lord had throughout his ministry continues to work among the apostles. And so that too can enkindle our faith as he continues to work even through them. And we know that he continues to work even through us. To continue to show signs of his great power and his love both for us and for those around us. And so you'll notice, or maybe perhaps you've noticed, that whenever we say the preface at Mass, we say on this day, with that feast we celebrate on this day. Because in this octave, we're not in so much the time of Easter as we're still in the day of Easter. And so if you still have leftovers from you know, your Easter celebrations or the chocolate's starting to run low, it's time to stock up again. Because we're still in Easter. Still time to have, you know, double desserts and the good foods and all that. Because the joy and the party should keep on going. Just as Jesus at that first miracle at the wedding feast of Cana recognized the need for more wine, so too this is the time to have more wine. Now is the time to enjoy and to celebrate, to look towards those best things, and to rejoice not so much in the abundance of chocolate, but in the abundance of grace and goodness that the Lord pours out to us. And those good foods and good snacks and those times we have with those people that we love can help to facilitate that sense of joy which we know finds its fulfillment in the Lord. And so today as we receive him in Holy Communion, we receive him truly in this present moment that he is with us and he continues to walk alongside us, continues to give us hope, to fulfill us, and to aid our joy as he continues to fulfill those promises which he made to us. As we walk the way of faith, we lift our eyes in hope, offering our petitions to our merciful Father that the church may be found pleasing to God during this Easter season, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That political leaders may be blessed with hearts of wisdom, charity, and justice in their governance, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That all who are unable to work due to physical or psychological limitations may be given the grace to endure the hardships they face, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer that this community of faith may grow ever more deeply in God's transformative love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have died may be raised with Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Gerald Myers, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you give power to the weak and guidance to the lost. Hear the prayers we offer today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to loud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalt in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins take this in memory of me mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. God, you take away the sins.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Disciples recognize the Lord Jesus and the breaking of the bread. Alleluia. joining us online, our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. If I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord be with you. And with Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.